Since 2019, toxic blue-green algae in the Highland Lakes has killed seven dogs in the Austin area, and it's caused people who live here to change the way they play in the summertime. But is this the new normal we have to adjust to? Uh, cyanobacteria actually evolved three billion years ago. That's with a B. Dr. Brent Bellinger is the city's chief algae scientist and a dog owner himself. Unfortunately, um, in July of 2019, we received reports of uh, dogs that had gotten ill and passed away here at Redbud Isle um, and down at uh, Auditorium Shores. Dr. Bellinger and his team sent samples of this slimy algae to UT and A&M Corpus Christi, who both independently confirmed the presence of a potent neurotoxin. Since then, dog owners have had to be very conscious of where they let their furry friends cool off. Um, obviously, we can't sample the entire reservoir. The algae does move, so it could be anywhere at any time. So how did we get here? Well, a few things are to blame. The invasion and proliferation of zebra mussels, and they're known ecosystem engineers, but also our land use, uh, development, and increased use of uh, fertilizers and other organic matter um, on our nicely manicured lawns. And you guessed it, warmer water due to climate change. The incidence, occurrences, magnitude, frequency, toxicity of the cyanobacteria is increasing across the water bodies. And Dr. Bellinger says it may not be a coincidence that we first started seeing the toxins here in 2019. That was just after the historic 2018 floods right here on the Highland Lakes. Lake Superior, um, about a decade ago, they had a 500 year flood event uh, at the headwaters and it turned the St. Louis River estuary into chocolate milk like what we saw here in the Highland Lakes and all of that organic matter, sediment, nutrients moving along the coast and out to the Apostle Island stimulated a cyanobacteria bloom that was it basically never happens out there. That's a recipe for, you know, uh, calamity. Even though a weather event in part caused this problem, Dr. Bellinger doesn't foresee a weather event that could end it. They're relying on signage and education, a nutrient management program that tries to sink the toxins, and incentivizing homeowners to replace their green lawns with native vegetation and rain gardens. Those help slow runoff into creeks and keep some of the harmful stuff out of the lakes. And while we don't want people to uh, just accept it, as the new norm, uh, we do want people to be aware and be cautious while they're out here, while us at the city, our partners, and researchers across the globe, while we try to find solutions to these problems. The city of Austin says that toxins have only been detected in the actual algae and not in the water itself. And since the algae typically grows in warm, stagnant water, letting your dog swim in a flowing creek is a safer alternative. The city also recommends rinsing off your dog after swimming, especially the long-haired breeds whose fur may trap the algae, and that could put them at risk of ingesting it. You can monitor the latest water test results in this story on KXAN.com.